here's the solution of the problem set 1. In the question 1, you're asked to calculate the probability of the parents who attend will be able to be seated. Okay, so first you need to see how many samples are there. Okay, so there are 600 seniors, therefore the number of n is equal to 600. So if you want to calculate that, okay, if there are 635 number of seats, what is the probability that they can, so you won't be, there are more number of parents over this, um, this value, okay. Therefore, to calculate the probability, you need to have the, okay, first you have to calculate the individual distributions. So that means the distribution of x1, x2, up to xn. Given that they are IID, so you are given that the X, this is the number of parents will be have 0, 1, and 2 with probability 1 third each. Okay, so the first step is to calculate the mean and the variance. Okay, the mean will be equal to 1 half times 0 plus 1 half times 1 plus 1 half, one third times 2. Okay, so one third time each of the value. As a result, you will get one. This is the expected value of the parents of each student. For the variance, you can apply the formula that okay, e x square minus minus the square of e x. Okay, so this is equal to one third times the zero square plus one third times one square plus one third times two square minus the square of the expected value which is equal to two third okay so you have the distribution of individual students okay next you're going to the whole sample okay you are you have the individual and you want to explore the sample distributions so for the sample distributions, now you have 600 students as stated. Assume that <coughs> y is the sum of all x. Okay, here you have 600 students, so n is equal to 600. <coughs> then you have to calculate the probability that the y, the number of parents, would be smaller or equal to this value. Otherwise, some parents will, will, will not be seated, okay, they have to stand. <coughs> to calculate this, first you can replace y by the sum of all x. Okay, so this is equal to Or you can say this is derived by n first. Okay, as I derived the, by the n in the left hand side, I derived by the n of the right hand side. But it's, it is basically the same because finally we found that the x bar is less or equal to this value. Okay, therefore you need to calculate the sample distribution of x bar. <coughs> the expected value of x bar is automatically equal to the mean of the sample one. While the variance of the x bar is equal to, okay, the variance in the for each x derived by the number of sample. <coughs> As you know, variance of, variance of x bar is just variance of x derived by n. So this is equal to one out of nine hundred. <laughs> Therefore, if I want to calculate the probability of x bar is less than this first you have to normalize the x <coughs> the way to do it is to minus the expected value that is 1 derived by the sample standard deviation which is less than The value at the right hand side. 
also minus the mean derived by the sample standard deviation. Okay, so what you will get is P, the Z, Z score is less than 7 over 4. Okay, then you can look at the C, Z's table. The probability that the Z is less than 1.75, okay, 1.75 is 95.99 percent therefore the probability will be 95.99 percent <clears throat> so here's the answer of the question one <clears throat> okay let's move to the question two for question two part a you are asked to calculate the mean of x and sd of x okay so given that x is equal to 2 with probability 1 half, 4 with probability 1 fourth, and 6 with probability 1 fourth. So the mean of x <coughs> is just sum of the value times the probability. So this is very simple. Elementary. Okay. Then the SD would be equal to probability times the mean times the value minus the mean. Take the square term plus the probability times the value minus the mean, take the square root, and plus the probability that the value is 6 minus the mean, the square root, which is equal to 1.65983. <coughs> Okay, in part B, you are asked to calculate the mean of x bar, which is equal to x1 plus x2 divided by 2. Okay, first, the mean is exactly the same, okay, because this is just equal to x1 bar plus x2 bar divided by 2. Then, you put in 3.5 here, 3.5 here, you get the mean will be, again, equal to 3.5. And the SD would be equal to the variance derived by the N given the formula. Then the SD would be 1.6583 derived by N, and now it's 2. Okay, then you can get the SD is this. <coughs> okay, just apply the, the formula, then you can calculate. <coughs> Then in part C, you are asked to calculate the distribution of x bar, graph it, okay, and you see whether the x bar is close to be normal. Okay, so you know the x bar can be taken by the value of 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, okay. Then, first you need to calculate the value of different x okay so you can write down x1 to be 2 2 4 6 and x2 again 2 2 4 6 so this is the individual distributions so if both are 2 the mean will be 2 okay so these four are the average of the x1 and x2 and if x1 is 2 x4 is 4 you can get the value is 3 okay and this also 2 and 4, the mean is 3. And if both are 4, the value will be 4. Okay, so using the same track, you can calculate all the average, all the value of the x bar. So by counting the number, you, you see that, okay, the x bar can be 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The x bar, the distribution will be like this, okay. Then, how many two are there? One, two, three, and four. Therefore, you have the probability four over 16, so you get two. For three, again, four out of 16. For four, you have one, two, three, four, five, five out of 16, okay? So on and so forth, you can calculate all the value. And then, you can graph it, okay? 
for the X bar. So there are five values, two, three, four, five, and six, okay? For two, they are with probability four over 16. For the value four, they have probability five out of 16. And finally, this is two out of 16 and one out of 16. Okay, so this is the way to graph the number. And compared to the X1, you can see that this is like not normal, okay? If you link this field value, okay, you can see that, again, this is not normal, but at least this is closer to normal. So this is how to deal with the question two. Then is the question three. In part A, you are asked to explain the following equations, okay? So these equations basically state that if you win, you get 1 plus alpha and raise the power the number of times you win times the number of times you lose, okay, and the value is 1 minus alpha you just need to express this in terms of words, then you can get the score in part B, you are asked to get the value, okay so this defined as G it is equal to 1 over T times log MT, okay so this is basically equal to xt log 1 plus alpha plus t minus xt times log 1 minus alpha. Okay, then you can expand the bracket. <coughs> this is equal to xt derived by t times log 1 plus alpha plus t minus xt divided by t times log 1 minus alpha <coughs> okay so if t approach to infinity by the law of large number this is the winning probability this is the losing probability okay so this is equal to p times log 1 plus alpha plus 1 minus p times log 1 minus alpha Okay. <clears throat> or you can say this is equal to Q. This is the result by the law of large number. Okay. Then in part C, okay, you are asked to calculate the optimal value of alpha. Okay. Then you can first define this as gamma, okay, define the whole equation. Then you can do the first order conditions. That means you differentiate the gamma with respect to alpha and set it equal to zero. Okay, then this is equal to P over one plus alpha plus q over 1 minus alpha equal to 0 okay <clears throat> then by collecting the terms you will get that alpha is equal to tp 2p minus 1 okay so this is the value the optimal alpha you get if you do the first order conditions okay <clears throat> Part D, you are asked to calculate the value of gamma if the p is equal to 0 0.55 and how much will, will you get if you back this game after 10 years? Okay, so this is this is not a very difficult question as you just need to plug in the values. Okay, so if p is 0 0.55 alpha will be equal to 2 times 0 0.55 minus 1 which is equal to 0 0.1 okay then the g when t go to infinity here okay this is equal to 0 0.55 times log <coughs> 1.1 
plus 0 0.45 times log 0 0.9 <coughs> okay so you calculate the value of the increment okay the rate of increase then after the 10 years what you will get is so this is the growth of your wealth each day okay then the value of m as t equal to 10 years later this is equal to e times the day okay times the growth rate of each day <laughs> then you will get the value will be something like eight billions okay so this is the value you get after 10 years okay <clears throat> finally in question four you are asked to count you do the OLS for the regression without the intercept okay then in part A you are asked to derive the beta and the distributions okay so first in order to find the beta what you need to do is to do the minimizations okay so what you need to do is first put everything to the left hand side to minimize the square of ui so what you will get is okay then you, take, you do the first order condition you are looking for the b such that this can be minimized okay <clears throat> then what you will get is b y i minus x i b equal to zero okay okay i base a square here <laughs> then you can see that you can derive two in both sides derive b in both sides what you will get is y i equal to x i times b b would be equal to the y i over x i or you can say this is equal to sum of x i y i divided by sum of x i square okay then you are asked to compute the distribution of beta heads okay so first beta heads can be rewrite as sum of x i y i divided by sum of x i square this is equal to x i times okay now you expand y i by x i beta plus u i then the denom denominator will keep it the same then you will get for the first term this is equal to beta plus the x i u i derived by the x i square okay therefore the distribution of <clears throat> okay beta head minus beta what we mean is the last term n times the square root of n you will get square root of n times x i u i derived by n and the denominator i also derived it by n okay so we can keep the same result and this is equal to the variance of v derived by e x i square times this term and some all the v i over variance of v in which the v i is equal to x i u i you just group the x i u i b v then you can find a similar result
<clears throat> okay, then this term will go to rares of V E X I square. Okay, this term will change and for the second term, this is <clears throat> the mean my the minus the the VI minus the mean of VI zero derived by the variance. This is exactly with the normal distribution. Okay. So this is the distribution of the beta hat. And in part B, <coughs> you are asked to verify whether the <coughs> EUI is equal to zero or not. No, 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 you are asked to verify whether the first one, whether this is equal to zero. Second one, whether this is equal to zero. And finally, whether x i u i hat is equal to zero. So amongst these three, only this one is true. This one is derived from the first order condition. You have to set this equal to zero, okay? And this is exactly equal to the ui hat. <clears throat> so from here, you can see that beta. So this is x <coughs> xi times ui hat is equal to zero. Okay. So this should be xi rather than b. Okay, careless mistake. You are choosing the beta to set the xi ui hat equal to zero. So only the third term is correct. And this is not correct. This is correct only if we have a intercept. So in traditional OLS, you are selecting B0 and B1 to minimize the error term. But now you don't have the intercept, so this is not guaranteed to be equal to zero. Finally, for this, okay, although we know that EU is equal to zero, this is only true, but this two is not exactly equal. This two is equal if and only if the ends goes to infinity. Then you can apply the law of large number. But now we don't know the value of n. Okay, so if n is sufficiently small, this should not this has not guaranteed to be equal to zero. 